God is good. You can't, it feels good to praise the Lord. That's what you do when you feel it refreshed. So I pray in God. Make, make an exchange. Exchange the garment God, the God of heaven and for the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come together and fellowship with one another. I thank you, Father, for each and every one that's here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for your blessing working through them and, yes. and, and upon your lives, Lord. Thank you, Father, that as we study your word tonight, thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by the satanic of the mind and spirit. Thank you, Father, that we decrease in you and all of you and none of us. I know every ear and every hear your word, every heart to receive it, and every spirit to contain it. I ask, Father, that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cord. All that you have me to say to lead your sheep. And Father, we'll be able to mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name, and everyone in the reader will say amen. Amen. We are teaching on a series called Spiritual Warfare. And we're on the second teaching in this series. And, this, and the second teaching is controlling your thoughts. Because that's where the battle is. The battle is in the mind. And the first point that we talk about in this teaching is that the only weapon that Satan has is the weapon of deception. And we look at the scripture to back that up. Then we start talking about the battle takes place in the mind. And we talked about that last week. The battle takes place in the mind. Even James in chapter 4, says, where, where, where does war come from? He said, where do you get anger and jealousy for one another? It, doesn't it come from the inside? You know, every, every, every battle, every angry uh, action, all that starts in the mind. And we have to get our thoughts under control. Because if we don't get our thoughts under control, the enemy can take and, and use our action for his purpose. Okay? Now, now, now. <laughs> We're going to move to the third point of the teaching, which is, if the question may be, if the battle takes place in the mind, how do we win the battle? And we win the battle by bringing every thought captive to the obedience of the word of God. Amen? You know, ideals, reasonings, speculations, all that kind of thinking can barricade us from God. And the enemy can work through that. You know, people have their own ideas about stuff. Even philosophy. I, you have a lot of people out there philosophizing. I mean, philosophizing. They are out there lying. They just, they just, I mean, they... <laughs> They have heard cliches throughout the year. They just quote them, you know. What I mean? And then a lot of them hear a cliche and run with it. All right. There's no scriptural background. When there's no scriptural back background, they philosophize. <laughs> but all that kind of thinking can barricade us from God. All that kind of thinking opens the door for the enemy to work through our lives, and it calls us not to experience the promises that God says. It will alienate us from the promise of healing, the promise of prosperity, the promise of peace. It will alienate us from all that. All right? So we have to get our thinking in order. Amen? So the way that we do that is we bring every thought captive to the Word of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Second Second Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to begin at verse 3. Hallelujah. When you get there, say amen. Verse 3. Paul says, For though we walk, that word walk means to live. For though we walk or live in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And that's so important. 
we had a little conversation going on here tonight before service, and we were talking about uh, defending ourselves physically. And Duke said, why not do it spiritually? You know, and he's right. You know, a lot of times we try to deal with the problem physically. For instance, when somebody says something to us or, or come, come at us in a negative way, we get physical with it, or we get verbal with it, all right? But that's not where the battle is. So you can, you can shut that person down, but they are not the root cause. You have to deal with the root cause, and the root cause is the enemy. Amen? So here he says, he says, even though we live in a fleshy body, even though we uh, walk in a fleshy body, our battle or the war is not according to the flesh. It's not, we don't use human weapons. That's why it's so important to uh, not allow anger to fester or, or to take control because anger will cause you to use human weapons. You know, anger, anger will cause you to pick up something and hurt somebody. And that won't solve the problem. That just helps the devil because now he's putting you in a place where he, he wants you to be isolated where you really can't work for God and stuff and you've got a prison now. You know what I mean? So we have to be mindful when those negative emotions come not to act on them because they are just a tool that the enemy can use to cause us to act wrong. Everybody okay with that? Because it's not a flesh and blood that matter of fact, hold your plate there and let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Praise Jesus. We're going to start at verse 2. Yeah, verse 2. Ephesians 6. Start at verse 2. If, if you have it, say I have it. Now hold your place in Corinthians, so we're going back there too. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, that strength that he's talking about, that power he's talking about, is not just power to accomplish uh, mission work or to do things uh, for the ministry. It's also power to help you discipline yourself. You understand what I'm saying? See, I can be strong in the Lord. When somebody says something negative to me, you know, the flesh automatically wants to come up and, and respond in the same way. Well, if I'm strong in the Lord, then I'll respond the way God wants me. I was telling Duke them probably about three months ago, I failed to test. I had a, a, a situation where I got in the flesh. I didn't even think about prayer. Prayer was the last thing. I didn't even think. I had to go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. You know, it didn't, thank God it didn't take off nowhere. But I was prepared for it and I was kind of putting myself in a position where it could have taken off. Okay. And I thank God that it didn't. So I didn't even think about it. But the battle wasn't a physical battle, it was a spiritual battle. And had I kept on trying to see my wife was funny, she was, you know, she was, she was, she was doing the right thing. Had I kept on, all I would have did was made it work. You know, when you try to solve a spiritual problem in the flesh, all you're going to do is make it work. You understand? So we have to be strong in the Lord. I said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild. See, the key word there is wild of the devil. That's, that's yourself. And, and, and that starts in the mind. The devil is very deceitful. He'll use relatives, he'll use close friends to try to instigate you into doing something you ain't got to do. He orchestrates circumstances to try to get you to get out your love walk. See, what he wants to do, he wants to get us out of our love walk. You know why? Because he's not in love. He recognizes that him, by, by, by him not being in love, him being, by the devil being uh, selfish, that's what got him kicked out of hell. Okay, so he knows that if he can get us out of our love walk, that he can get us out of the will of God. So he's going to do things. See, if you notice, your biggest challenge in life is people. Dealing with people, rather on your job, rather at a store, you understand? Even where? In the family, and, 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 and even sometimes with children. See, how you found the children sometimes has, has an effect on that child. But the enemy will try 
to work through that child to get you to stay and do something that maybe would discourage the child from even coming to come to So we have to be, that's why we have, that's why Peter said, be alert. Be watchful. Not just looking for physical uh, situation, but watch uh, how, how the enemy tries to creep in and, and deceive you and make it crazy decisions. Be alert to your thought life. Think about what you're thinking about. You understand what I'm saying? Think about the thoughts that you have. Have you ever done that? The, have you ever thought about the thoughts that run through your mind? Why, where did that thought come from? See, why am I thinking like that? See, it's good to do that. It's good to analyze your thoughts because every action starts with a thought. So you need to analyze your thinking and you need to see if you're on a pattern. Some people have a pattern. Some people are, are, are confrontational and don't even know. They don't even realize it because they've been doing it so long, it's just a habit. So you need to examine yourself. Are you confrontational? I'm going to tell you how you tell you're confrontational. Everything somebody says against you, you ready to challenge it. You got people out there like to argue. You got people out there that they call it, you know, we just have another discussion. You're not having a discussion. You are you. You know what I mean? I'm not an arguer. I don't like to argue. When I get, I'm, I used to be, when I would argue a lot, it just make me more. You understand what I'm saying? So I try to stay away. If I see an argument coming, I got to get away from it. I can't stay in that situation. And you got people out there that the enemy uses that are confrontational, and they're gonna and they're gonna step in your face. They're gonna say, the devil knows what gets you to go to, uh, 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 what uh, influences you to, <laughs> to get on your nerves. He knows because you don't told him. You don't told him. You don't say it. You Boy, I hate when somebody do this. And the enemy said, oh, okay. So he's going to find somebody that's going to do that to you. You see what I'm saying? That's why we have to think before we talk. He don't know what your weakness is until you tell him. So when you say, man, I can't stand people just sitting around here and just talking about it. Boy, he's going to have a whole crowd of folks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's going to have a whole crowd of folks sitting there. But why? It ain't, it ain't them so much that trying to get you out of the will of God. Why? It's, it's, it's all it's, 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 it's all deceiving. He's very tricky. Alright? Alright. Verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. See, we're not, the battle is not a physical battle. Spiritual battle. The root is spiritual. The only way to get rid of the problem is to uproot it. You and you do that through casting out that spirit. Just like G, just like Paul, when that lady was walking behind him and I think he aggravated him, he didn't turn around and snap on her. He turned around and spoke to that spirit. He told that spirit to come out. That's what we need to do sometimes. Matter of fact, we do it all the time. When the enemy coming against you and somebody, just speak to that spirit. So I command you, spirit of violence, spirit of anger, I command you to come out of them. See, you have authority over them. You have authority over them right then because they are now, they have now entered your zone. See, they, see, see that spirit of anger has now entered your zone. See, normally we don't have authority over people, but when they invade my territory, then I got authority over it. You see, 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 when you start coming against me, I got authority over that spirit now. You know what I'm saying? And, and once you start doing that, the enemy will stop coming to you that No, he don't. He don't, you know, because see, what you're doing, especially when you do it around people, what you're doing is showing folk that the devil is nothing. That you are more yeah, oh yeah, you're showing them that it's real too. That's good. Because a lot of people teach that the devil is not real. They say it's just a parable. Yeah. Uh, one church, as a matter of fact, one, one of the members that come here went to a church that taught that Adam and Eve wasn't real. That that was just a parable. The devil is not real. And that's why so many Christians being defeated out there because they think it is not real. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you something too. Even though a church teaching that, if you are truly saved, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, once that teaching starts going forth, I say, hey, that, that ain't right. 
you know, if you listen to him, he'll direct you to the truth. He'll lead you to the truth. Amen? So we have to realize that our battle, y'all can go back to 2 Corinthians, our battle is not a physical battle. And we got to grab that. Because when, you, I'm, I'm, when you're on your job, if you got a good job and you and you making a difference there, the enemy is really going to come at you. Especially like, like Sherry. Sherry's in a, in, a, in a good job do where they have great influence on people. Okay? They, they can, they, they're in a position where they can pray for folks and make a difference. All right? The devil's going to really come at you. Because, not because of you, but because of what you do. Because of the impact that you're making. You know what I mean? So we have to be on, we have to be alert. Is this the enemy coming at you? Don't let, don't let people get you to a place where I see some people get mad and walk off their job. Now, the only problem with that is the next day, you see your bill still going on. You still got to buy groceries. You still got to make mortgage payment or rent, whatever you do. You understand what I'm saying? But see, the enemy let cause you to get into the flesh, cause you, the enemy invaded your thinking, your thought life, and got you to the point where you walked off your job. Think about that. You got people that walked out of relationships, husbands and wives that walked away from each other, been together 30, 40 years, and walked away from each other because they allowed the enemy to get in their thoughts. You have to, you have to govern your thoughts. You have to think before you speak. You have to think. You have to analyze every thought that comes in your mind. Is this of God? Is this of the devil? Well, I'm going to tell you some people that's hard to tell if it's from God. It's easier to tell if it's from God than anybody else. You know why? Because whatever it says is going to be in line with this word. If it's God, it's going to always be in line with this word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can't tell if it's God. Well, you don't know your Bible. You need to start reading your Bible. Because whatever God tells you is going to be in line. His rhema word, his spoken word, is going to be in line with his logos word. Because his logos word was a rhema word at one time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he's not going to, his rhema spoken word is not going to be contrary to his logos word. So Jesus taught a kingdom divided can't stand. So if he tells you one thing that's contrary to the word, he's dividing it. And that kingdom, Jesus said it out of his mouth, will not fail. So we got to start analyzing our thoughts. We got to, listen, you can't act on every thought. And see, I, I'm, I'm talking to me, because I'm one of them. I tell you what's on my mind. And sometimes that ain't good. You know, I have to analyze what I'm going to say. I have to, you know, if you think about it, your most uh, disastrous conversation or the most disastrous thing you ever said was when you're angry. Think about it. Because if you're not angry, you know you But if you're angry, you don't let everything go. And you saying everything that come out come out in, in your thought life. This is when the devil comes in. This is when the devil because we angry now we're not thinking. So he'll plant a thought there. Say this. Knowing that that is going to really destroy the or destroy your relationship. Or cause you to lose it. But he's going to slip it in there while you while you babbling on it, fussing and arguing. He's going to slip that in there on you, and you're going to say it, and it's going to ruin it. It could even, it could even cost you everything that you get. So that's why you have to think. That's why we can't allow negative emotions like anger and, and bitterness and all this kind of stuff be in us. When, in Ephesians, when we read, in the power of his might, that's what we have to do in the you can't forgive some of the people that, that have done things to you on your own. It takes the power of God to do it. It takes the love of God, not 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 worldly love, but godly love, to forgive some of the things that people have done. It takes godly love to not only forgive them, but to help them the next time they're in you. Even though they did you wrong the first. This is this is why we have to control our thoughts. Not always, and, and it's not always easy. Sometimes you can do it with with, with, with the grief, but then there's sometimes there's a struggle. And what I found out, when I find myself struggling in an area, I now have to examine that area. Why am I struggling? With this? Why am I Why am I having a problem with this? Because just like I forgave Terry, I should be able to forgive Flo. 
Why am I struggling? Why can't for, why why am I struggling to forgive so much? What what's going on there? I need to get to the root of the problem. So that if I forgave Terry, I should be able to forgive Flo. I should be able to forgive Andy. You understand what I'm saying? So why am I struggling with this? See, sometimes we don't we don't we don't examine things. We this is we this is a lifestyle. You gotta examine every thought and every thought. Examine why you're struggling in that area. Examine, examine why things are not flowing like they're supposed to. You see what I'm saying? So God says, listen, listen. He said that all I need are provided. So why am I lacking? Why am I, why am I, why don't I have food in my house? You understand? Now, when we first start out, it's a, it's a process, but we've been running the same for about 10, 15, 20, 30 years. <laughs> Okay, why am I still struggling? Now, so that, now don't get me wrong, there's seed time and harvest. I understand that. But we're, I'm not just talking about abundance. I'm talking about just my needs. My, my bills paid, food in the refrigerator, roof over my head. The basis. So Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of doing and these things will be added. I don't have to worry about my needs. So I have to examine why, 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 why am I in need? What, where did I miss it at? And if you start doing that, God will show you. But you will. You got angry. You got angry. And you got out your love walk. And when you get out your love walk, you don't even realize it. It starts affecting other people. You miss it with him, but now that 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 love that you didn't show with him is not going to flow to the next person. It can even affect your house. You find yourself snapping at at the, at, at, at the mate or the children, but a little simple thing, and it's all because you miss it with him. Now I'm gonna tell you something. In your household, you better keep it. Men that marry better keep it in, in line because it says that when we don't treat our wife right, our prayers. You understand what I'm saying? Our prayers are hindered. <laughs> are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, that ain't just for the men. That also applies to the women. You know, when you, but see, what caused that friction? Probably when nothing in the household, might have been something outside the house that you know That's why you have to examine everything. That's why uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, uh, no, chapter 13, 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. He said, examine yourself and make sure that you're in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine yourself and make sure you're in the faith. The faith refers to living according to the word of God. Are you living the way God told you to live? Are you doing what God told you to do? And all of his thoughts in the mind. He'll have you thinking, you know what? The enemy is so good at deceiving he have you thinking that God favors Terry over you. When the Bible clearly says he's no respect for him. But you, Duke may see something happening in Terry's life that he wanted, and he'll say, well, I've talked about my you know, I've been, I've been going at this for a long time, and, and I, I heard Terry mention it one time, and now he's got it. But that's all you heard. You don't know what Terry's been doing in the in, in his prayer closet. But the enemy won't tell you that. He'll just, tell, he'll just show you Terry got it. You see what I'm saying? And you have to be mindful of that kind of stuff. You can't let that garbage come in. When you see your brother get something, you won't start rejoicing. Start dancing. Start shouting. You know why? Because if he did it for Terry, he'll do it for you. And, and one of the ways that you can block it is to start complaining and murmuring that Terry got Allow jealousy and envy to get in there. And you'll block yourself up every time. But it's a thought. It, 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 it starts with a thought. Amen? All right. Y'all back in 2 Corinthians chapter 10? All right. Praise God. Well, I thought I was going to get further than this. We're going to have a part six, too. Not yet. I ain't even got it. <laughs> <laughs> Reasoning, you know, we, you know, that reasoning a lot of times is based on education. 
lot of times we try to reason stuff out, ration stuff out, because we, with our mind, you know, we're smart. And I'll give you a good example. Now, if you ration it out or reason it out, does it make sense to help the enemy? Does it make sense to give the enemy food if you're hungry? Does it make sense to give him water if he's thirsty? No, it don't make, you know, you try to reason that out. That don't make sense. Why would I strengthen him to hurt me? Because the enemy want to do your harm. So Jesus said, love the enemy. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. If he's hungry, give him food. Well, if I try to reason that out in my rational mind to my natural mind, it don't make sense. And if I stay on that, you know what will happen? When somebody that does did me wrong comes, and the test comes for me to do them good, I won't have to. I, I, I will even take it to the point of lying, saying I don't have to, when all the time you got it. And God was just testing you to see if you would go through it. He knew you would, because he knew your heart. You understand? So we have to stay away from that reasoning and, and speculations and all them kind of ideas, different ideas, because they barricade us promises and the love of God. Amen. And the word of God. Y'all okay with that? All right. Back to chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2. And verse, well, let's read verse 3 again. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not flesh, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down, your Bible makes your imagination, mind say argument. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now we're talking about the way that you win the battle in your mind is to bring every thought captive to the word of God. Now when we say Christ, I can say the word of God too. Okay? I can use I can put the word of God there because in the beginning with the word word of God, the word was God, right? John one of them. <laughs> she gave me, she labeled me, 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 me. But I can say the word, right? Because I can't have Christ without the word. You know what I'm saying? I can't live in Christ like I'm supposed to without the word. So I need to bring every thought captive to the word. Why? Because the word of God, and we ain't going to get into it tonight. I don't have time. The word of God uh, analyzes every thought that comes. And it analyzes the intent of that thought. See, that's important. A, a lot of times, thoughts are disguised where we can't see it. The word of God gets back into the subconscious and all that stuff. And it analyzes the intent that it's talking about. So we need to, but see, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, bring it captive to the word of God if you don't know the word of God. That's why you have to read your Bible. Amen. And he said, the weapons, verse 4, he said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. So if you look up the word stronghold, it's defined in the dictionary. So it's talking about a fortress of thought that we've been accumulated throughout the years, years of our lives that's back in our subconscious, and the thoughts that the enemy done put there. What I mean by we done accumulated situations we done been in that we acted in the flesh in, we never got rid of those thoughts. They didn't just go away. That's why when you got saved, you were still able to curse like you used to curse. You were still able to fight like you used to fight. You understand? Because those strongholds were there. And even now, in certain situations orchestrated in your life, you'll find one of those fleshy actions coming forth. But it started with a thought because that stronghold is there. Well, here Paul is saying, through God's weapons, we can tear those strongholds down. How do you tear it down? You tear it down by replacing it with something else. You replace those bad thoughts with the thoughts of God's word. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, he says, take no thought by saying So if I want to tear down the, the strongholds of the devil, I need to open my mouth. So I need to say what the word says because that's how you take a thought. If the thought comes to be fearful, the way you take that thought is saying, I'm afraid. You just took that thought of being fearful. You see what I'm saying? But instead of saying that, if the thought comes with because of a situation that's in your life and the thought comes for you to be afraid, you come and say, fear is not from God. God did not give me the spirit of fear. I refuse to fear. Or go to uh, one of my favorite cities, Isaiah 41 and 2, where God tells us to fear not. He's with us. 
You start quoting that. You see what I'm saying? And now you're replacing that thought of fear with a thought of faith. You see what I'm saying? So now, but see, most of the time, we'll get around now, and, and listen, folks, you don't just do it here. This is not where your battle is in here. Your battle is outside that wall. It's on your job. It's at the grocery store. It's, it's, it's sometimes it's right in the middle of your house. That's when you have to start saying these things. You know what I mean? Not not in here. You know, we're colder than here. You know what I mean? I'm not afraid. Get out there and first thing happens. Oh, God, I'm afraid. And then you start telling everybody else how scared you are. And the devil says, oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, fear was about to take me over. Don't, don't, don't even miss it. If it was, don't say it. I heard Gloria say, sometimes it's good not to even say something. That's it. I like that. Don't let him see yourself. Because he can't read your mind. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if they had known what Jesus was going to do, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have crucified him. They could, he can't read your mind. The only thing he knows is what you tell him. And what he'll do, he'll orchestrate circumstances. He'll get people to try to get you to find out. He'll try to get you to speak to find out what, what's your weakness or what's going on with you. See, he watched how you respond to him. He watched how you respond if, 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 if your boss comes to you and says, you know, you have to lay some people off. First, oh, I'm going to get laid off. He might be telling you that you won't have to tell him they get laid off. Not that you're going to get laid off. Or you may be the one that's going to get a position because they're getting laid off. You see what I'm saying? But, but, when that, but, but first thing, fear does. Fear, fear something. I'm going to be the one that laid off. I know. He ain't going to be no You know what I mean? And, and the devil's sitting there listening to all that. He said, okay. Now he knows fear working. So now everything that fear has, he's going to start bringing forth. See what I'm saying? And it all started with a thought. When that thought comes, bring that thought in submission to the word of God. If a thought of, of anger comes, bring that thought in submission to the word of love. To God's word of love. You see what I'm saying? If a thought of fear comes, look up every scripture you can find on peace and start quoting it. One of my favorites, Isaiah 26 and 2. It says, uh, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. But we stop there. But the, he, 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 the end of that verse says because we trust in him. You see what I'm saying? We trust. My trust in him will cause me to stay focused on him and then I can experience perfect peace, mature peace. But see, we, see, we have quote scripture. You got to do it all. You got to trust him. My experience in peace is based on my trust in him. That's why the enemy plants thoughts to try to get us from, away from trust. That's why we always say that what Brother Chester teaches so often that we lose, you know, we've been on it about seven years. <laughs> but you know what? We need seven more years. Because I even find, I don't know about y'all, but I find myself liking sometimes in that area. I find myself sometimes, uh, the flesh want to come up. You know what I mean? See, anytime the flesh come up, that's a lot. Anytime the flesh come up and control, that's a lack of faith. So faith, when you're in faith, it stays in love. Faith stays submitted to God. Because it says without faith, you can't believe it. And one verse in uh, Romans 14, 21, I believe it's 23, it says that with uh, what, whatever is not done in faith, it's sin. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm anything, anytime I'm out of faith, And I'm not trusting God. So I can't experience that peace that passes all of his time. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, I'm sure. It says in uh, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, to experience that, you can let your request be made known. You can pray and do all that, but if you don't have trust, if you're not trusting him for what you're praying about, you won't experience that peace. People say, oh, I pray to God, but I'm still in fear because you didn't trust him. You just 
did it mechanically. That's why it's so important that we keep our heart filled with the word of God. Because whatever you put in your heart is who you're going to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, we, and then we have to examine that. Do I spend more time listening to secular, worldly information? Or do I spend more time listening to the word of God? See, the word of God doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. A lot of times it doesn't make sense to the, to the natural man. But it makes sense. And that's what we're to do. We're to stay in the word. Every opportunity you get, read the word. I'm serious. Every opportunity. If you got, after you finish, your lunch break and you done work down your time. If you got five or ten minutes left, take advantage of every opportunity. I'm telling you, the test is coming. And the enemy brings tests. It's not God. God don't tempt you with evil. Even though people say that God God brought this tempt, this temptation where I had this fight and desire of fear. God ain't going to cause you to be fearful. You know what I mean? He ain't gonna talk. But the enemy is going to do it. And, and his purpose is to find out where you are. To find out your weakness. And especially if you're one of them that like to talk, he say, he tell him, you know, you watch it. All I got to do is do this watch. Watch. As soon as he do it, oh, God, I, I hate that. I hate when people do that. I hate when them circumstances are okay. Mark that down. They don't like that. So, 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 so now that's the key you feel you feel. But he ain't gonna just stop there. He's gonna look for all the things you just like. We good at telling folks what we don't like. You need to tell them what we who we are and what we don't like. Do the opposite. Alright? Sometimes if you you know, Paul said he sees the folks on the night. He said, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is edifying to the hearer. You hear it, right? You in that category. When you speak, let it edify you. You see what I'm saying? If you can't, you know, you, you, uh, the world says, if you don't have something good to say, what? Don't say nothing. Just shut up. <laughs> Just be quiet. The pressure's coming, and you want to, oh, 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 I'm doing something. Mm, 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 mm. Shut up. Until you can get the word of faith coming out of your mouth. You know what I mean? Put some paper on your mouth. Walk around the table. He, 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 he. He, he don't know what you're saying. He can't read your mind. Amen. <laughs> praise Jesus. Father God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you that you've provided everything we need for victory. And we thank you, Lord, that we know we have authority over all the authority of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm us. And we thank you for revealing to us each and every day, Father, all that we have. Reminding us, Lord, all that you've already provided for us. Father, we just love you and we thank you that you sacrificed your son Jesus so that all this is made available to us. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that you've given us to empower us to walk in this victory every day. And Father, we just love you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.